I'm an autoimmune failure. <clears throat> My name is Deb Parrish. <clears throat> I thank you for allowing me to uh, put a face to some of the, uh, to the laws. <clears throat> I am on the board of directors <clears throat> of Indiana Normal. <clears throat> this is the pamphlet that I had made uh, for the state fair this year. <clears throat> uh, I am a nurse, <clears throat> have been a nurse for over 30 years. <clears throat> I don't have PowerPoints, I have pictures. Uh, in 1977, <clears throat> 78, I was 24 years old. I was arrested for one marijuana cigarette. Because I was a college student, I was a member of the Contemporary Dance Theater at Ball State University, and I danced on my toes. I was a little ballerina. I had leg cramps. I did summer stock at, uh, oh gosh, the open theater, my mind went blank. I was in the sky, yes, I was in the chorus of um, <clears throat> a Juliet Prow show, and because of me working and going to school, <clears throat> I had leg cramps. <clears throat> and I was a recreational user because I couldn't drink anything because alcohol does not work well for me. Uh, my ex-husband, or excuse me, my uh, deceased husband, who is a recovering alcoholic, used to say in his lead that after one drink he could have his way with me, after two anybody could. <clears throat> so it was used, uh, the marijuana was used as a creative outlet when I was in the contemporary dance theater. <clears throat> as a result of getting busted, uh, the, the sheriff decided to take all my medication, including my birth control pills, so the only thing that, uh, a positive that happened <clears throat> with my arrest was my daughter Megan. My daughter Megan in 1990 was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. <clears throat> she was put on a study <clears throat> at St. Jude Hospital. She's not a poster child. This is just part of my story. This little girl almost died on me three times. And if it wasn't for the doctors at Riley Hospital who had studied marijuana in San Francisco, she would not be 31 years old today working with pediatric children in a cancer clinic. Does this little face look like a criminal? Does that little face look like a criminal? The medicine they gave her was called dronabinol. <clears throat> dronabinol has been federally approved, <clears throat> excuse me, by the FDA since 1984. And one of the side effects is dry mouth, I'm sorry. <clears throat> They've tried to have it rescheduled because, because it's in a delivery system, you, can, you have your right route of delivery systems, you know, your IV, your sublingual, your IM injections. Well, my nursing drug handbook tells me <clears throat> that I have to inform my patients, are you allergic to cannabinol or sesame seed oil? And this is the only reason why the sesame seed oil, they're allowing it to be in this pill right here. <clears throat> I also have to teach my patients <coughs> bright le red letters. <coughs> Dronabinol is the principal active substance in can can <coughs> cannabis sativa, which can produce both the psychological, physiological, and addictive behaviors. <coughs> as far as it being a gateway drug, if you look at the obesity of the children in this country, so is sugar. And if this is legal in a sesame seed oil, the way I look at it, <clears throat> if we can fry potato chips in sesame seed oil and serve them up in a bag, then why is the marijuana illegal and the potato isn't? Because a lot of things are in the sesame seed oil. <clears throat> I lost my job <clears throat> due to a terrible injury. <clears throat> I was technically phased out. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was a rehab nurse a hospice nurse, and I was a wound nurse. I had shredded my posterior tibial tendon and had to have surgery to reconstruct my foot, shave my bones, uh, take one tendon from my little toe, bring it up and over to my arch, to my Achilles, and sew it all together and put a screw up inside of my foot. 
While I went through rehab, <clears throat> going through my physical therapy, I continued to take this. I would not use the opiates. I would not use any other kind of medication. This helped with the neuropathy pain. <clears throat> As a result of um, my um, <clears throat> hospital seeing that uh, they were going to phase out LPNs, I'm also a member of <clears throat> Phi, Theta, <clears throat> Phi Theta Kappa, an honorary. It's for honor students. And I was going back to school to get my RN. I only had maybe six more months to complete my degree. And I was going back because my husband died with esophageal cancer. He was able to do his chemotherapy and radiation without the, the heavy uh, the Demerols and uh, the morphines <clears throat> because he was using the Dronabinol. My daughter, as a result of taking her Dronabinol, was able to do intercecal uh, chemotherapy, which means they take a needle about yay long and they stick it through your spine. And she was, you know, had a little of her said, but she was able to, to handle that without taking <coughs> codeine or any other kind of opiate. This isn't an opiate. People want to call it a narcotic and it's not an opiate. Did you know that in the same family as cannabis <coughs> is hops? We make beer out of hops, for heaven's sakes. <coughs> You know, they want to talk about its uh, addiction properties. Um, <clears throat> being a nurse, I have seen uh, people abuse pharmaceuticals. <clears throat> I have worked in a doctor's office. I've had pharmaceutical reps come to me, and they're the biggest drug dealers in the country. We have two drugs that I have seen more devastation to families that are not scheduled. Alcohol. <clears throat> and cigarettes. They're not scheduled, but yet it's okay to go out and smoke a little cigarette on your break, or if you want to go out after work and have a beer with your pizza, that's okay. <clears throat> My conundrum is now <clears throat> being able to come back into the marketplace. I was employed by St. John's Hospital for years. I started there as a candy striper, and I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was. <clears throat> But um, St. Vincent's took it over, and in their glory, they decided to phase my job out. For seven years, I took this medication because I could not work, because I have a third, fourth, and fifth lumbar spine and laminectomy. That means they take the spinal column, that, your spinal cord that has been pushed out through that disc, they remove that disc, they put your spinal column back in, spinal cord back into your spinal column, and then they fuse all your bones together. <clears throat> and that's very, very painful. <clears throat> uh, they knew that I took this because I couldn't perform on, you know, narcotics. I know what narcotics will do to a person. You know, you probably had grandma in the hospital on morphine and you would tell the doctor, oh, please, it makes her loopy. I've seen nurses take their Lortab when they have back, in, back pain where I worked. I saw nurses take their Xanax, which is legally prescribed, if they've had a hard day, because now corporate medicine wants you to work 12, 16, 18 hours a day. That's how I run my foot. I've been taking this legally prescribed drug that was in the pharmacopoeia <clears throat> since seven years ago. I'm kind of drawing the blank right now. <clears throat> 2005, excuse me. <clears throat> And now that I'm ready to go back and be a productive person in the society and have a job, I have sent resumes and I have glowing, glowing <clears throat> references. I've gone to women that I've worked with before and colleagues that I've worked with in other extended care, hospice care, and they said, tell me, Deb, I know what you can do. You sat on a committee at St. John's to transform a patient care at bedside. But you know what? That zero tolerance policy thing, our insurance company considers you a high risk nurse. Because even though <clears throat> you have a legal prescription <clears throat> for this medication, there's no way in God's green earth we can prove that you're not smoking marijuana. So guess what? I feel that my civil rights has been infringed upon because zero tolerance policy 
I can't pass a urine test because it says so right in this drug handbook. Dronabinol is the main ingredient in cannabis sativa. And guess what, kids? I'm taking it right now. Do I look stoned? Do I look like a criminal? Do my patients look like a criminal? Do the doctors look like criminals? I have a right through the American Nursing Association with my creed, but the state of Indiana could pull my license if they wanted to, <coughs> to speak out, to say that it's okay to have these studies. Let's see what we can do. You know, have compassion for those patients. I was there in February, and you know, I'm not gonna get preachy, but as a nurse, I wanna say shame on you that voted against this because of, your, of Senator Nolan. That's just telling your colleague, in my opinion, as a compassionate nurse, that you don't care. That was, my, that was, that was, the, that was the impression that I got from that committee. <clears throat> after Senator Nolan spoke and there was a rousing standing ovation. And then a few people went, no. And it's like, we don't care about you, Tom. I've seen those pumps infiltrate as a wound nurse. It is not a pretty picture. I've seen them go down to the bone. I've had to pack wounds and sometimes they don't heal. <clears throat> And I applaud his courage for coming up and talking about his pain. Because let's just, let's just try. My great, 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 great grandfather <clears throat> was a British soldier and he was a turncoat. And in the Henry County Register, I am proud to say that Roderick Craig was awarded Indian Territory. And he's a fifth name, on, fifth or sixth name on the Henry County Register. He grew hemp. My great-grandfather and my great-grandfather, <clears throat> my grandfather grew hemp for the war, and I considered them very patriotic to do that because the Philippines were invaded by Japan, and they felt it was their duty. You know, well, if it was made illegal <clears throat> by Mr. Anslinger and his smear campaign, campaign in the 37, why was it okay? Was it because we were at war? Right now, I feel I'm at war because I'm here to advocate for my patients. I'm here to advocate for the farmers. <clears throat> I see factories sitting in Anderson. Delco Remy's plowed over. Plowed over. Chrysler sits two blocks down my street. It's called Metal Dine now. Absolutely empty. We have to import the, the lotions, potions, and powders, and the fabrics <coughs> to make this stuff here in our country. We are shipping stuff out the door. To me, <coughs> renewable energy is America's um, <coughs> national security. What we have here in a plant that was put here by God, and if all of you are God-fearing men, which I'm sure you are, you all have a higher power that you believe in, whether it's Buddha, it's your, your, your Christ, or your rock. When I was in the program to uh, get myself um, out of my insanity of a rescue fixer and caretaker in Al-Anon, I had to think of my higher power as a Mack truck because that was something more powerful than me. And during my research <coughs> in school, on my thesis in nursing school, I thought, how dare, how dare three men be so self-righteous to think that they were God, to declare war on one of God's plants when all they wanted to do was make some discriminatory smear campaigns against the sailors coming in from other countries. Blacks, people of color, that's discriminatory. You know, what harm is it to try just to study this? just to see if we can do it. You know, in order for me to take my state boards, <clears throat> I was a good girl, you know, you get burnt once on the stove, you don't ever do it again. <clears throat> and I never smoked again until I went, to, uh, well, I went to school, never smoked again, and then when I tried to take my state boards, they said, nope, you've got a felony. 
though it cost me $3,000 to go back to my attorney <coughs> and uh, get this little piece of paper that cost court time too and was all over the dockets, you know, so it tied up the court. So I could take my state boards. <clears throat> I can't get a job anywhere now because I take a legally prescribed medication. It makes me test positive. You know, it's, it's really sad that, um, you know, we have uh, documented evidence through the University of Mississippi. Um, the, in 1836, the, some of the first documented studies were done at uh, University of Ohio, which makes me kind of sad because I always root against them when Indiana plays. <clears throat> but I think uh, we're the crossroads of America, guys. We were built on the farmer and our natural resources. Our natural resources is America's renewable energy. In 1984, Paul Harvey on his talk radio show said, you know, if the Corn Belt <coughs> grew mar uh, changed their cash crop from corn to marijuana, we could cut the national deficit, national deficit, by one-third. <clears throat> what I look at with my patients, what choices do they have? They can either suffer in silence or risk going to a dark alley to get something that could be tainted. You know, legalization is such a vague term. Cigarettes are legal, morphine's legal, Coca-Cola's legal, but I don't want marijuana, cannabis, hemp, pot, weed, reefer, whatever you want to call it. I don't want it regulated like soda pop. Let's make consistent laws because you walk into a village pantry every day of the week and you'll see that big yellow sign that says, you must be 21 to purchase your cigarettes. And I think, and this is just my opinion, ain't judging, just saying, but I don't think uh, <clears throat> if uh, you walked into the store, you don't usually see cocaine sitting there between your Budweiser and Winston's. It would be regulated. It would be taxed. That revenue would come back into the, uh, to uh, Indiana and uh, I think that would be good for our, my state. Another thing that concerns me is the passage of that uh, spice t uh, law <clears throat> because the verbiage to that, it, for me, is very vague. And I knew the gentleman because I went to high school with uh, Kim Cronk. And uh, it says that synthetic, the, the, the bills that were in uh, front of the house said that the synthetic can, cannabinoids makes processing, dealing, and manufacturing, delivering a synthetic Delta-9 tetrahydroendocannabinol is a synthetic form of THC. So since this spice law is that vaguely verb, verbiage <clears throat> that I'm talking about, does that make me a criminal, criminal as I walk into this room to testify? about something that is legally prescribed. You know, I think what needs to be done is education, <clears throat> to educate yourselves on, with documented facts, things that have been documented, not just hearsay or what your neighbor tells to you. <clears throat> I think we need to communicate the medical field, the industrial, the agricultural field. I have a pair of hemp shoes I bought. I should have brought them today. I bought, bought, bought those silly things in 1981. And everything on that shoe is all natural hemp. The sole, the, the, the little uh, cellulose uh, uh, thing around the side. The only thing that's not hemp is the metal grommets. Next, we need to cooperate. And you know what? That's just growing together and looking forward in the same direction, going towards the common, towards a common cause. We need to think about the greater good. I've seen so much compassion lost, especially in the medical society. Kids today, gosh, I sound like my mother. You know. Oh, am I getting too much? Yeah. Okay, I'm done. I will. I will finish because I have a tendency to ramble. <laughs> so I, I appreciate you uh, giving me the time. <laughs>